Hello everyone, uh, today we'll be discussing about context-free grammar, which is another form for describing another form of describing languages, much like regular expressions. But context-free grammar has its own set of rules. So uh, to start off, context-free grammar has uh, terminals, variables, a start symbol, and productions. Uh, terminals are just the symbols that the al of the alphabet of the language being defined. Variables are a finite set of other symbols, each of which represents a language. A start symbol is the one that the language will first start with, and productions are rules that uh, that we would use to uh, to uh, describe that language. So, for the example of variables, could be a, b, and c, and variables are usually on the left hand side of a production. And example of terminals are small letter A, small letter B, small letter C, or 0, 1, etc. And they're usually on the right hand side. Numbers and small letter symbols are usually uh, uh, given as terminals. And uh, the, the best way to identify a terminal and a variable would be to observe the productions, which we are looking into right now. So these are productions. Productions have this uh, arrow symbol. Uh, that determines the rules and these these uh, what what this means is that uh, this um, the this letter the symbol on the left hand side can be replaced by zero one so the, le the left hand side is usually the variables and the ones on the right hand side that are not the uh, that are, that do not have the left hand side symbol is are the terminals so s is a start symbol as well as a variable and 0 1 are the terminals here s is also s is still a variable because this s could just be replaced with the left hand side basically everything on the left hand side are the variables and everything on the right hand side are the terminals except these variables that are again written and start symbols are the ones that uh, that are always at the beginning of a production and in the beginning of a production all the uh, variables at the beginning are all start symbols so it's uh, in, in the questions it will always be given which are variables and which are terminals but the easiest way to know is that the left hand side one are the variables and the right hand side one are the terminals right so context free grammar what it usually does it just gives derivations it gives iterated derivations it just replaces a symbol with another symbol so we know the rules or the productions for the, this context free grammar is s goes to 0 1 and s goes to 0 s 1 so we first start off with the start starting symbol. So the starting symbol we go to uh, we always uh, go to 0 s1. We could start with 0 1 2 but depending on the language that we're trying to get we use that. So the language that we're trying to get the, the language that we're trying to derive is 0 to the power n and 1 to the power n. So how do we derive that? First we write 0 s1. Now 0 s1, why do we use 0 s1 and not 0 1? Because if we just use 0 1, we can't replace anything. 0 1 is a final state and uh, the, there are no variables that we could replace here. We use 0 s1 because there's a variable s which could be replaced further with the same productions. So we start with 0 s1 and then we replace s with again 0 s1 because s goes to 0 1 or 0 s1. So we uh, replace s with 0 s1 again. And after that, we replace the, this s with 0, 1 to make a point that we have the equal number of zeros and equal number of ones. So 0 to the power n and 1 to the power n is satisfied. Um, then now we're going to look at some examples of how to um, write context-free grammars. Right. So suppose we need to write, we need to design a context-free grammar for a substring of, that, that has a substring of 1, 0, 1. How do we do that? So first let's define a start symbol and we define a rule. So 1, 0, 1 has to be there and we don't care what, what we get in the beginning, we don't care what we get in the end. So since we don't care what we get in the beginning, we don't, we don't care what we get in the end, so let's write a rule for that. So E could be uh, any symbol of 1. Anytime 1 can be replaced and it could be any symbol of 0 or it could be epsilon. So E could be replaced by 
1 e again and 1 e and just to epsilon or it could, e could be replaced by 0 so 1 0 1 0 there could be many combinations of strings it could be 1 0 1 1 or 1 1 0 1 and stuff like that so this is a uh, context free grammar rule for this how do we test it out let's start uh, from the start symbol so let's go to uh, let's let's say we want to derive this symbol 1 1 0 1 0 okay so 1 0 1 is the substring here so let's write e 1 0 1 e now let's replace e with 1 e and 1 0 1 and let's replace this e with 0 e because we want to get this here and we want to get this one now let's replace the e's with epsilon uh, so 1 0 1 and let's replace this e also with epsilon so 1 1 0 1 0 we get this we do get this string so this sub, this context free grammar is accepted now let's look at the next one we need to have we need to design a cfg such that it has at least three zeros right so to design a cfg with at least three zeros what we could do is we need to know that we, we know that three uh, the number of zeros that we would have in a string is uh, minimum number of zeros is three so they could be uh, it, the strings could the string could be something like zero one zero one zero or zero 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 just zero 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 or one one zero zero one zero something like that so we, in the middle of the, these zeros, this, it wasn't mentioned that this, the three zeros have to be consecutive. So in the middle of the zeros, there could be any symbol. So let's write in the beginning also there could be say any symbol. In the middle, it could there could be any symbol, and in the end also there could be any symbol. So we just know that there will be the minimum number of threes that we will have, the minimum number of zeros that we will have is three. So this e could be further replaced by one e or 0 e or epsilon much like the previous cfg so we could again test this out uh, let's start with the start symbol and let's uh, let's say that we want the string this one we want to get this string right so e0 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 so replace this e with 1 e 0 e 0 e 0 e and 4 e's so replace this e again with 1 1 e and e 0 e 0 e 0 e so again we replace this e with epsilon so we get 1 1 0 e 0 e 0 e and then we replace now we need to get this string so observe we have one in the end so we replace this e with one e so one one zero e zero one e zero e so one one zero let's replace e with epsilon so nothing zero one let's replace this e with epsilon so nothing so zero and let's replace this e with also epsilon so we get one one zero zero one zero so this cfg is accepted now let's write another let's design another cfg with at most three zeros that means the there could be one there could be just one zero there could be zero zeros or there could be two zeros but and there could also be three zeros but not more than that so how do we design the cfg for that so first let's start with the start symbol always we uh, could define that there could be one zeros there could be one zero and there could be another zero then we could replace this with b with another zero and then c and then this c could also be replaced with another zero so the third zero uh, and the combiner combine it and we get three zeros at most three zeros and then we it wasn't mentioned how many number of ones there will be so ones could be ones could be uh, you could have any number of ones as possible so let's replace d with one d and epsilon could have nothing even no string even so now we could also we could also replace a with one so we could also replace s with one s or epsilon we could also replace a b with one b or epsilon 
we could also replace C with 1C or epsilon and we could also replace D with epsilon that's it so that's how the, we would get for at most three zeros now let's look for uh, a to the power x and b to the y well this is kind of similar to the 0 to the power n on 1 to the power n problem uh, cfg so that would basically just be s goes to a s b and s could be replaced by as many number of times of a s b as possible and it could also be in the end replaced with epsilon or it could also be just replaced with a b right so that would be the that would be the context free grammar for this right so that's that's uh, all uh, with uh, just normal context free grammars now let's look at some leftmost and rightmost derivation now if a string is given and all these productions are given to us these are the productions given for the particular string we could just derive we could just start from the start symbol and derive the string somehow so in the end we end up with that string that we're supposed to derive so all we did was just replace the productions accordingly and try to derive the string that was given to us in the question so east you could pause the video and just see how e was replaced each time with all its productions like here like so so e was replaced by uh, parenthesis e and then this e plus e was again replaced by e plus e so that we would get these operators here so in the in the beginning all we did was we tried to divide this into two operators just uh, sorry two uh, two sections and then after that we further divide into try to try to get these this operator and then after that we accordingly um, derive it you could pause it and see and try it on your own and check the answer now what is leftmost and rightmost derivation leftmost derivation is basically just deriving from the left side from the left hand side first so first of course we just derive from the start symbol and we get the star, star operator asterisk operator somehow after that we replace this the left side stuff first so e is replaced by i this i is replaced by a and then since after that there's no more and we've got we've got this part of the of the of the string that we're supposed to derive now we start deriving from here but then again we start always from the left side so e will be replaced replaced by this parenthesis e but then after that after we replace e plus e we then replace from this we replace this left side first so e is replaced by i i is replaced by a then after a is over then we go to the right side so the left side is prioritized first and then we go to move towards the right side similarly right in the rightmost derivation the right side is prioritized more first and then in the end we go towards the and sorry derive the replace the left hand side parts now let's look at something called a parse tree what is a parse tree now for this expression let's just minimize this right for this expression there is a parse tree that's drawn so what it basically does is it's another way of uh, representing uh, it's another way of representing sorry yeah so it's another way of representing this derivation here over here uh, like this so you could replace you could uh, uh, what you call you could uh, represent it in this format in an equation sort of format algebraic equations format or you could uh, use a parse tree and represent it in that way so uh, as you can you can ma mix and match this parse tree with this uh, algebraic equation format so e was first it always it starts from the start symbol here the start symbol is e so from, from e it's divided into two, uh, two part three parts to get the star asterisk operator from then we then uh, we then replace this e with uh, the parenthesis e and then we replace this middle e with e plus e and so on we could pause the video and see if the answer matches and you could see how a parse tree is so much similar to this it, it's actually up to you whichever you find easier or you could just draw both if the question begs for it uh, but yeah that's how you represent these uh, derivations that's all about context free grammar i hope you uh, the concept is a bit clearer after watching this video give a thumbs up to support this series and go